Okay, so I want to summarize. I feel like my language is all over the place, and we've been covering a lot of stuff. So here we go. The word problem is the key to designing an asynchronous sequential network. If the word problem's wrong, it can be impossible. You want to focus on more circuits, not Mealy, because you can't have any glitches, and Mealy can produce glitches in the output, not so much in the states internally, but you've got to be careful because sometimes the external circuits will take the output and feed it back into your asynchronous sequential network. All right, at the state table level, this is basically where you start. Um, if you start here at a state diagram, you're going to get lost. You're going to get hooked in and think that this is what has to happen. You're going to think the problem's impossible. So start right here at the state table level. And start with one stable state per row. Okay, so one of the key things we're going to focus on is the bounce test. You can see here and here. Um, so we're going to review that one more time. I've used the other language to describe it. Essential hazard, a logical thing, causes revision to the state table. Let's add slip right here because I've contrasted bounce versus slip. So this is all language here, and I want to review this in more detail coming up. But you can see we do it twice, and this causes a revision of the state table, and you go around in circles right here until you get something that makes sense. I've never found it useful to build an actual implicant table to shrink things. If you can shrink them, you can see them inside the state table. The, you can see the equivalent states inside the state table. Sometimes you shrink two states into one state, then you fluff it up into three states, and you go round and around in circles. The transition table, the critical thing is the state assignment and then checking for critical races. So let's call this category here critical races. If you do your state assignment correctly, you can plan every single race. You can see the critical races and plan a solution to them. You're working through one-bit changes, so you want to work on top of a you know, what looks like a Carnot map, but it's a state assignment. So you use the same one-bit transition from cells in a K map going left and right, or up and down, to confine yourself to one-bit changes. And then you can see all the critical races and you can plan your slips. And you can add states. It's a practical thing. It's not a open-ended, I don't know if it's going to work kind of a thing like a bounce test. So you can be confident you have stopped all critical races. I use the word slip to describe an unstable state. I use the word slip to describe a bounce. I use slip to describe a race. It's whenever you're moving around on the state table or the transition table or the excitation table. Output flicker, um, we've beaten that horse to death. Uh, that's part of the requirement. Sometimes the word problem doesn't care about output flicker. Muxes are asynchronous sequential networks, but they inject a lot of delays. So. I've never tried to use them. Flip-flops are really hard to use. Most of the development tools, the minute you use an if command, start throwing in flip-flops into your design. So you don't want to try to do this with flip-flops. Otherwise, you run into these battles with um, VHDL or Verilog. So I just use gates. The last big issue is overlapping the implicants. This is done when you build your k-maps and if you're just doing a truth table you actually have to go back and create the k-maps so you can see the implicants and get them overlapped this becomes really difficult when you get into six or seven input variables you end up with truth tables that are 128 rows uh, so you have to develop some mechanisms to cope with that so our Big three review items are bouncing, critical races, and overlapping implicants. So why do we do a bounce test? We do one because there are essential hazards in our circuits. We can begin seeing these in the very first state table we build. Here is what we want to have happen. Here is the bounce test showing that there is a hazard. So in this circuit down below here, 
we have added a delay. You can see these not gates and two buffers adding a delay. So this will exhibit the essential hazard and this won't. We'll start here at the stable state 00, zero and we'll see this one go to the correct destination 01 and we'll see this one fail by going to 11. I have two circuits, this one up here and then one down here. They're starting out at the state of 00, zero both of them. The only difference is this NOT gate here has some delays associated with it. So due to manufacturing differences, um, material properties, this NOT gate has a delay that's longer than this NOT gate. The correct behavior is going to be illustrated up here. The essential hazard is going to be demonstrated here. So I'm watching the blue timing dots going through the circuits. And you can see the bottom one slipping to the 1-1 state. So we saw this top circuit with no essential hazard moving to the correct desired state. And we saw this bottom one go to the incorrect one. So the bottom one has the essential hazard. An essential hazard is caused by an input changing the energy balance inside of our circuit. How that energy percolates through the circuit could go and move us from this column to this column first and then slip down. Or, because it's a tipping point, we don't know how the energy percolates through the circuit, it could cause us to slip down this column first and then move over and we end up at the wrong state. So this concept of slipping down this column, or you can think of the input moving us over here or slipping us over to here first, is a tipping point. We don't know how the energy percolates through the circuit. But very clearly, slipping down this column and moving over is a description of the problem, not the solution. For example, in the combination lock circuit, I had two inputs, enter and combination correct. It was only until I saw that letting go of the enter key could be associated with states. And the transition from correct combination to bad combination and locking that into another enter key change, that is what stabilized the state table. So it's the external world where you find the solution to the essential hazards. If this is your focus on eliminating essential hazards, you're going to get depressed and see no possible solution. The other thing is, essential hazards are just possibilities. They're not definitely things that are going to happen. And the way we design our circuits is we create buffers for the way the energy percolates through the circuit and it does tip the way we want to most of the time. So we shouldn't have to add buffers or delays. The buffers and delays are built into our combinatory parts of the ASN circuits. But we do need to keep track of them and worry about them. And that's what this exercise is about here. Our goal is to write down the problems in some kind of a manner that we can check off later on. Okay, so we're going to have a column here of our stable state. The input that we're at right now, so we can locate it on one of these rows. And then the exact variable that's changing that causes the essential hazard. So this is our table here. And each of these rows then is something that we have to check. All right, so let's get started. Let's see, we've got one right here. We start right here, this is our desired path, but if we bounce, we slip down to here, then we bounce back and we end up right here. So this is the problem one, alpha. So we have a stable state alpha. The inputs are one zero at this point. So this is x1 and x2. And then the variable that's changing is x1 is changing to a 0. 
So x1 is going to a 0. And that's what causes this first essential hazard. Here's our path. And then we go here and we do the bounce test. We slip down to here. OK, second one. Let's go, let's check this one. From here to here. We slip down to here. We bounce back and forth. There's no problem there. From here to here. Slip to here. Bounce. Slip to here. Bounce back. End up right here. Oh, boy. So we've got a problem going from beta at 0, 0. And it's when we change x1 to a 1. To a 1, we got a problem. Here to here, and then we bounce back and end up right here. OK, so we're finished that with that stable state. Let's look at this guy. We're going to go from to here to here. Now it's bounce to here to here to here. So we've got a problem there. So we've got an alpha problem at starting at 1, 0 and going to x1 being a 1. I mean, x1 transitioning to a 0. All right, that's this one. OK, let's check this one. We go to here, stable, bounce, to x. Yes, we've got a problem there. So delta going to, well, we're starting off at a 0, 0. And now in this case, we have x2 going to a 1. It's causing a problem. So I think you get the pattern of this. This is the way we're going to document our unstable states in the future. Yeah, so it looks like I got them right. I didn't finish it off. I didn't go down here to the last one. But yeah, this is the method of documenting essential hazards so we can check them at the very end and see if they are a problem in reality. OK, so what we want to do now is practice the relationship between the transition table and our state assignment. If you start off your state assignment correctly, then the transition table and eliminating the races in it becomes pretty easy. So let's start off. We have A going to D. Right in here. We have B going to A to C. We have four states that could be two flip-flops, but I can tell you right off the bat that that's not going to work. We need to f fluff it out. We need to spread them out, spread these states out. So we can't do this in a two by two. We've got to do it in a, let's try three flip-flops. Flip-flops. Let's call this one y1, y2, and y3. Value of 0 and 1, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, like a kernel map. OK, so if we put A in here, then A can relate to, let's say, D and C and B. All right, now, so how would D get to C? Well, it'll go like this. So we've got a slip right here. How would D get to B? We'll have to go out here and then come in here. Okay, how would C get to B? C, we got to B like this. So we got it's one, two, three slips so far. How would C get to A? That's good. B to C would go down the opposite direction. A to B is good. A to D is good. So we've got three slips that we've got a plan for here. But we're, we're doing good. So A is going to be a zero, zero, one. D is a 0, 0, 0, and a 0, 0, 0. OK, so let's deal with D going to C. D going to C is a 2-bit change, right? So we can't have that. Let's make a new state 1, 0, 0. That's this state right here, 1, 0, 0. So there's a new state here, 1, 0, 0. Make that a 0. And then make this a 1, 0, 1. OK, we finished that one off. Let's go from D to B. D going to B is a, whoa, it's two bits changing again. We can only change one bit at a time. This one is 0, 1, 0. So let's add a state right here, 0, 1, 0. 
we can only go from here to here. So we're going to make this a zero. And then we're going to go up to B, a stable B, which is a zero, one, one. So that's now a zero. All right, we've covered that one. Now let's go from C to B. Can't go from here to here, but we can go from here to here. So that's a two bit change. C to B, this is a one, one, one. So we're going to add a state right here, one, one, one. And this is going to be, uh, let's see, we're going to make this uh, one, 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 a one, one, one. Okay. So now we get to here. And what are we going to do? We want to go to B, which is a zero, one, one. Zero, one, one. Okay, and we're going to get up here to B. All right, so we solved that one. Okay, what about, we had to go from B to C. B to C. B to C. Can't get there from here, so it's this, this B to C. So how can we get to C? Um, we're going to go through 0, 1, 0. Now we're going to go through 1, 1, 1 again. Okay, we're going to make this a 1, 1, 1. And then right here, we're going to go to C, which is a 1, 0, 1. All right, and the rest of these are don't cares. So we use this, slipping through this state twice in two different directions, but we're in different columns. Pretty cool. So let's try to figure theirs out. Looks like their transition table looks something like this. So they put A here in this corner. So A's got to go to D. So we're going to have to have a, well, that's not really a slip, right? Those are next to each other. B and A go back and forth, right? All right. B has to go to C. So there's going to be a slip through this state. One, zero, one. There we go. Um, let's see. B's got to go back to A. That's good. Okay, C. C's got to go to A. That's good. C's got to go to B. Okay, so we slipped through this twice. Right? Going back up. Okay, look at D. D's got to go to B. So we got to slip through the 0, 1, 1 state. There's a 0, 1, 1. He's got to go to D. C's got to go to D. Oh, wow. So this is a double slip. C's got to go, okay, we can go to here without slipping. But then we got to go up. So 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 0. That's this one. All right. And why do they have this? This guy. Oh, they didn't even use this one. They just wrote it in. Okay. So you can see that the state assignment diagram actually helps you do all these slips and all these arrows in here going up and down and up and down are really confusing. So in summary, your state assignment table helps you build your transition table and account for all the one bit changes that are necessary. The third and final thing we're going to review are static and dynamic hazards. A static hazard is where we want this zero to remain a zero, statically, unchanging, but we get a momentary glitch. Or we want this one to remain a one, but we get a momentary glitch. So we've got four circuits that cause these problems, and I've built it, and I'm going to demo it now. I've got it set up now so that when I toggle this X1 button, none of the outputs change. These both stay zero, these both stay one. But by single step it through, upper two zeros will glitch momentarily to a one. There's the glitch. Similarly, down below, these ones are going to change to a zero. This is called a static zero hazard. A dynamic hazard is very similar. When I change this to a 1, the output should change to a 1. And indeed, it does change to a 1, but it bounces. That's what we're going to look at next. The static hazard is created through these delays. So let's single step it and watch it 
bounce over here. A dynamic hazard bounces, whereas a static hazard glitches. So let's watch it bounce. I'm pressing Control I here inside of Logicism. Okay, here it goes to a one, then it goes back to a zero, then back to a one. That's the bounce. The solution to static and dynamic hazards is to overlap implicants in the kernel map, and you've seen that several times now. The point is, is that these are logical problems. We can simulate them in a logical environment. We can practice solving them in the simulators. Do it. Build faster circuits. Good luck.